What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2021 Toyota GR Supra 3.0. Huge thanks to Toyota for providing me here with the 2021 3.0 Supra to review for you guys today. So about the 2021, well, it's only been out for a year and Toyota already came back with more horsepower, almost 50 more horsepower to be exact here for the uh, new Supra for 2021. So from the outside here, it's basically identical. The only thing you can tell that makes this a 2021 is the fact that you have Toyota Supra script on the painted brake calipers there. Otherwise, everything's the same. The wheels are the same. Everything on the outside is the same exactly. So um, it's gonna be impossible basically to tell a 2020 from a 2021. Now, if you had a 2021 with the uh, special launch edition that had red mirror caps, that's a dead giveaway. And the 2021s do have a new special edition called the A91 edition, which comes in a special refraction blue color and has a few other little enhancements to it. Um, but those are the only two giveaways. Otherwise, with all the other normal colors and the normal trims, um, it's going to be basically impossible to tell them apart. But I'm going to go over all the differences as well, that all the things they did change under the hood and with the suspension and everything, they made a lot of huge changes, again, to get you that 50 extra horsepower and and all the other enhancements that you get here for 2021. So I'll break down all those here later on. But on the outside, I still think the Supra looks fantastic. I absolutely love the design of it. Uh, this is a car that every time I park it, I have to turn around and look back at it whenever I walk away. It's just one of those designs I just personally can't get enough of. I know some people don't love it. I think it looks spectacular though. Even though you know some of the vents are blocked off and things like that, I still think it looks so cool, so unique, just so curvy, you know, from the pointed nose there, the six jewel LED lights you have there in the headlights, also just coming down to the sides here, you know, you have the double bubble roof, you have those uh, curves with the hips on the back uh, quarter panel of this car that looks so, so good as well. And then going out back again, I just love the way those taillights are shaped, the integrated duckbill spoiler you have there, and uh, it's just such a cool look there out back especially. And honestly, I just don't think there's a bad angle on this car. It just looks so good in every color it's in, in every angle it you see it at. I mean, it just looks so, so good. And it really turns heads on the road too. So many people stop and stare at this thing, whether they're driving or walking or whatever, it really stands out. All right, so let's start it up and go for a drive. So the Super 3.0 here has the BMW key, but it has the Toyota you know, badging on it. I like this red stripe that's unique to the Supra, just a few buttons on the back. It's a, you know, just a plastic, key but it's nice and light and pretty slim and so I'm glad that it's not too big and it's a really nice key but of course it's keyless access keyless entry and push button start so just leave the key in your pocket hit the end and start button and it roars to life. Also, if you're curious to hear about the interior in the 2021 Supra, my wife and I actually did a full in-depth interior review on the 2020 Supra, and it's basically the same here for 2021. The only changes are that uh, on the 2.0s, you get Alcantara inserts on the middle of these seats and they're, and they're manual seats, but here on the 3.0s, it's the same. Now, if you go for the A91 edition, you do get Alcantara inserts and blue stitching to match the blue exterior, but that's it. Otherwise, it's all the same. They did also get rid of the six and a half inch display on the base model, so now every Supra regardless of engine or trim has this 8.8 inch uh, touchscreen uh, iDrive infotainment system but you still have to go up to the package that has the JBL speakers and the navigation in order to get the wireless Apple CarPlay unfortunately. All right, so setting off in the 2021 Toyota Supra 3.0. Well, the first thing you probably notice is the little snarl from this inline six turbo uh, three liter engine. And uh, it sounds really good. It is a good bit louder than the 2.0, um, which I will be reviewing as well for those who are okay with a little bit less horsepower. Uh, but other things, you know, if you haven't been in a Supra before, uh, really the main thing is, you know, as far as driving goes, the first thing you'll notice is the visibility. It's kind of a letterbox uh, 16 by nine viewing type of uh, display here where it's you know just very narrow windows um, it's not too bad though and I spent a week uh, last week with a 2020 super actually and I'm used to the visibility it's really not bad I mean yes this probably isn't the best vehicle for taking in all your surroundings but it is totally fine and uh, like I said I got used to it no problem other things here so uh, you know you have this adaptive suspension here in the 3.0 versions of the Supra and uh, you know it does a good job you know with the sport mode it'll firm itself up a little bit and soften itself up here in the normal mode and I really don't have any complaints with the ride it is a little bit firm over bumps and stuff but it's a sports car and you expect it to have a sports car like ride so yes it's not going to glide over bumps but it also isn't jarring with its ride either and it's totally agreeable again I spent a week with a 2020 already no issues whatsoever now the suspension has been totally retuned uh, the dampers and uh, the spring rate all that kind of stuff has been completely changed here to deal with the higher horsepower um, but so far I haven't noticed a difference in ride but I've only put about six miles on this car so far 
Um, so we'll uh, you know talk more about that as we get more miles on it here. Other things though to note, um, so you still have the same great sharp throttle response, same really good brake feel from these brakes. Um, it's a typical BMW feel with those. So you know you have a little bit of a tip in, and then the brakes bite pretty close to the top of the pedal there, and they're very aggressive with their bite down point. And so it takes a little bit of finesse to be super smooth with them, but I really like for a sports car especially to have that responsive brake pedal feels really good and it's nice and progressive once it starts biting uh, so you can really modulate your brakes very well I think um, other things here steering is nice and appropriate in the normal mode if you want to put it into sport mode you can have heavier steering and also in the sport mode you can customize which things you want to be in sport mode and it's the individual mode you can set it up as so that you know if you want some things sportier and other things more relaxed like in the 2020 super I really had everything in sport but then I had the suspension in the normal mode since we have so many potholes and bumps around here and that I think was a little bit better for carving up the back roads around here so it's nice you have that customization and you can change it up you know however you like but I'm gonna go ahead and put it into the sport mode let's turn down onto this back road here and see how it does here we go oh, man it's even more thrust than before then you gotta slow it down because this thing flies Wow, so uh, the 2021 Super here runs the same three liter, I should say it's roughly the same three liter inline single turbo six cylinder engine. Uh, and so now it does 382 horsepower and 368 pound feet of torque. And um, those are the numbers that Toyota gives you at the crank, but really a uh, car and driver dyno this, and that's what it's making basically at the wheels. Um, so crank is well over 400 horsepower. And because of that, the zero to 60 time doesn't really lie. It's They claim 3.9 seconds zero to 60, which is also conservative. Car and driver has gotten it as low as 3.7 even in the 2020 before the power bump. Now with the power bump, you're looking at probably a three and a half seconds zero to 60. So we're talking about supercar levels of acceleration here in this thing. It's crazy. So the power though doesn't just come from a retune or something like that. I mean, it has been retuned, but it's really the whole head is different. So now it has a different piston design, which drops the compression ratio from 11 to 1 to 10.2 to one. It also has a new exhaust manifold, which goes um, from two ports to six. It has completely revised all that stuff in the engine, as well as retuning the engine and the stability control. And you know, all everything has been recalibrated. The transmission is still the same gearing and it's the same awesome ZFA speed automatic, which by the way, has fantastically quick shifts here. We'll go into the manual mode. Immediate downshifts. And I mean, there's a split second delay for the upshift, but it is so, so sharp. And I think as far as torque converter automatics go, this is still hands down. The ZF8 speed is the best uh, torque converter automatic for those enthusiasts that, you know, want the quick response. Uh, you know, it's basically the next best thing to a dual clutch transmission. It's honestly faster than some other dual clutches that aren't quite as quick, honestly. So, um, a very, very impressive amount of performance here. And, uh, yeah, it is, it is crazy. Um, it's just one of those cars that, you know, the thrust combined with the awesome sounds and the crackling and the pops you get, especially here in sport mode, really make it feel very lively and very exciting. And uh, it also, you know, has, it still struggles to put down the power. You still have a back end that, you know, it's struggling to deal with it. You still have the same Michelin Pilot Sport tires on it. And so they're still the same 275 wide in the back, 255 in the front. But we're coming some corners here and let's see how it handles them. So, yeah, oh man, this thing, it still feels really good. So they said they retuned the suspension um, to have increased roll resistance and give you uh, more stability in transitions in between corners. Uh, so it's going to, you know, give you a little bit more of a planted feel, but okay, it still wants to kick the back end out. And I am relieved because whenever I read the press release and all the changes, it sounded like they kind of wanted to tune out some of the tail happiness from the Super. And obviously I'm on public roads here, so I can't really play around with the back end a whole lot safely. But, um, you know, just whenever I drove the 2020 on track last year, it really liked to wag the tail and I loved that about it. It really made it feel alive and it made it feel like you actually had to have some skill to drive and it wouldn't just, you know, drive itself perfectly and be perfectly 
completely neutral and stuff, it actually wanted to play and you had to, you know, be a little careful because it could kind of bite back a little bit. Obviously, you have stability control and stuff, and that has been retuned here for the 2021s, again, to cope with the extra power, and everything's been retuned. The power steering's been retuned. I mean, every single thing you can think of, you know, the active differential that this has has been retuned also to cope with the uh, extra power. But man, this thing just feels so, so good in corners. And um, so yeah, and I also did drive a 20, uh, 21 four-cylinder. And it's kind of interesting, you know, with that being over 200 pounds lighter, how, you know, this still uh, retains the same pretty good curb weight. It's uh, 3,400 pounds exactly now, which is a gain of three pounds over the 2020 3.0. Um, and, you know, after just getting out of the 2.0, which I will be posting that video next month when I can talk about the pricing on the 2.0, um, but it really is amazing how you feel the weight a little bit more here in the 3.0, but it's really not bad. And I still think that this vehicle is really well set up. I love the short wheelbase. That, that's part of what's always going to give this a tail happy feeling because with a shorter wheelbase, that's even shorter than the wheelbase in the BRC and the 86. Um, you know, it really gives you that playful character that I really, really love. And, um, Oh, but yeah, the power is just so monstrous in this thing. <laughs> just, <laughs> oh, it can get you in trouble so quickly because it is even faster now. And all I want to do is desperately just floor it everywhere I go. There's also a couple other little things they did to improve uh, the handling here in the Super. So there's also new bump stops and they also have these new uh, braces that connect uh, the strut towers to the radiator uh, support there. And so, um, you know, all that's supposed to, again, increase your... Uh, stiffness and stability and stuff and um, again on a back road again just getting out of the 2020 last week into this they feel you know almost identical I think they really just had to retune the suspension to make sure it was evenly matched to the extra power but I think you know the, two, the 2020 suspension already could have handled the extra power just fine it was doing just you know fine on its own um, but I think that's kind of why they did that I don't think you know, they said uh, whenever there was a press briefing they did with a bunch of us journalists they said how they didn't want to change the character of the car so it's not like this is going to have a different character yeah that back end still twitches i'm so thankful it still has the tail happy back end that's the best thing about the supra and compared to a lot of other sports cars regardless of price or setup um i think this just gives you a more playful attitude and like of course you know people are going to compare this to the c8 corvette even though they're completely different vehicles in the way they're set up um and also the corvette's a good bit more expensive i'll add but you know this actually is way tail happier than the corvette especially you know now the Corvette's mid-engine and stuff I mean maybe it's a little closer in its comparison to a C7 Corvette but with the C8 I mean this is going to be whoa, so much more lively when it's handling uh, than the C8 I also would argue that it actually has a less intense acceleration experience than this because of these turbos and the way they kick on speaking of the turbos though um, another thing I want to mention here so they did whenever they retuned everything in that different head they did uh, kind of shift the power around a little bit so torque comes on 200 rpm later which isn't a big deal so now i think it comes on around 1700 rpms instead of the 1500 or so that, that came on before um but in addition uh it actually has the horsepower the peak horsepower doesn't come on until 800 rpm later at 5800 rpms and so redline is 6500 and it makes that peak power all the way to 6500 but what it means yeah, this thing, it's got such good grip still. Anyway, but what it means is uh, that with this engine, you know, you're going to have it feel a little more peaky. And, um, you know, I think I could maybe, again, since I just drove it last week, I can split hairs here and say that I think that the power does feel a little broader in the 2020 than it does here in the 2021s. Um, is it a different experience? Not really, unless you're again getting right out of one and into another um now i'm going to be driving this vehicle for the next several days so i will certainly be paying attention to that and trying to really compare it closely uh but you know so you have a little bit of a more narrow peak power band you have so much you know boatloads of horsepower and torque that i don't think you're going to miss it's not like there's gonna be a dead zone or anything like that i think it's you know still gonna have plenty of power my first few accelerations no issues whatsoever but now you know we're in traffic and stuff you can't even floor the super because it's so fast uh you're just gonna get caught up to everyone in this 8-speed automatic does such a great job with its gears being nice and closely spaced together that it really still rips your head off and always keeps you in the meat of the power band so you never feel like you're out of power or like it's ever feeling slow in any way. I mean, it's always, you know, just one little twitch of your foot away from just expl exploding. 
<laughs> and then I just stomped on it from you know 30 miles an hour and it, again that back end wants to kick in and uh, you know I am in sport mode so it's a little more lenient with that stability control but I'm sure you turn that thing off and this thing will still drift around like a champ Oh, yes, I love the Supra. I loved it last year, and yes, they made it even better. I don't think they even needed even more power. I thought it was plentiful already, but I'm certainly not complaining. 47 extra horsepower, three extra pound-feet of torque is um, more than welcome on any car, honestly. This crackles, I love it. And it's just as loud as the 2020 as well. So if anyone was worried about, you know, maybe them messing with things here for 2021 with the exhaust, definitely not. It's the same exhaust, still has the same active feature, and, you know, it gets louder with sport mode, and still has all the same glorious crackles and pops as it did before. <laughs> that one was actually like a gunshot out of the back. It's hilarious. But anyway, uh, thanks to Toyota. I'm going to have the Super here for the next few days. So I'm going to drive around here many, many more miles. And uh, I'll come back and give you guys my real-world fuel economy, um, which will probably be lower than the EPA estimates because it's really hard to drive slowly in this car. Um, and then I'll also give you guys all my other thoughts here uh, that I've noticed here over my next few days of driving. All right, so I've been driving the 2021 Supra for several more days now. I've put 177 miles on it in my uh, few days of driving here. And that was mostly just driving to all my car enthusiast friends' houses and giving them rides and showing it to them. Everyone was so excited about this car. And this car just in general, just driving around, I mean, it gets so much attention, even in white. The previous Supra that I had for a week was red, and I thought maybe the red color, you know, helped it to stand out. But this one being white is a little more subtle, but man, this thing still turns so so many heads. I've talked to neighbors I've never talked to before. Like everyone comes out of the woodwork to check this thing out. Everyone loves the styling. And so again, even though this is a controversial vehicle online, in the general public, everyone loves it. Everyone's giving you a thumbs up. Everyone wants to check it out. And everyone has good things to say about it. So yeah, I've really enjoyed my, you know, again, now 178 miles of driving. I've got a lot more impressions here on the uh, 2021 Supra, and especially the power delivery, which I will demonstrate right now. <laughs> that back end still squirms, and whew, it pulls so, so hard. And so the more that I've driven this, the more that I've come to appreciate the 2021 enhancements. Because when I first, you know, drove it the first few miles, I was like, it doesn't really feel that much different than the 2020. But it definitely feels a good bit stronger now. And whenever you look at the torque curve, whenever, and the uh, power curve uh, in the car and driver dyno test, you'll notice that uh, even though, you know, the power comes on later here in the 2021, it actually still makes even more power at 5,000 RPMs than the 2020 does. And then once you get to the peak power of 5,800 RPMs, um, then this again continues on. But no matter where you are in the RPM, band of this car, you're still doing more power than you did in the 2020. So all around, it is an improvement. Now, is it a drastic improvement? Again, after just driving the 2020 Supra, now I can't talk about pricing yet for the 2021 Supra, as that embargo will lift in the middle of June, and I will include the pricing in the description once I can I discuss pricing. But what I'll say is that if you have a 2020 model year vehicle, yes, this is an improvement but it's not a night and day difference that you should feel bummed about missing out on the extra power. And if you want extra power, you can always retune everything yourself if you'd like and you know get some extra power out of your 2020, I'm sure. Um, but if you're on the fence, if you wish that it had more power, if you wish that it was faster than a you know sub four seconds or to 60 and you wanted that extra power, then I think the 2021 is certainly uh, probably going to be that extra little bit that gives you that extra little bit of insanity that maybe some people thought the Super was missing. Again, I didn't think it needed more power. I'm happy it has it, uh, but man, it is, uh, they're both awesome, but you know, I, I really do not think it's a night and day difference, and especially, um, you know, depending on when you're watching this video, if you can get a really good discount on a 2020 that's left over, um, I think that would still be a solid buy. I don't think, you know, everyone has to wait for a 2021 or else you'll miss out. crackles and pops. Another thing though that, you know, they retuned the suspension in this and so some people were wondering, you know, if the retuned suspension would mean that the ride would be different or worse or something like that because, you know, Toyota did say officially that it is sharper and yes, 
maybe it is incrementally sharper. Again, if you're going back to back between the 2020 and 2021, but personally, it feels you know pretty much the same as the 2020 as far as handling goes, and that goes for ride as well. I don't think the ride's any stiffer. I don't think it's any softer. I think it's about the same, and it still is like in the 2020. I did the same thing. In my sport mode, I went into the individual settings and I actually turned the uh, suspension into its normal mode since the roads around here, even the back roads are kind of bumpy and stuff. Had that in normal, and I mean, we got some tight corners here, um, you know, just even going around these here with the normal suspension mode, but everything else in sport. It still gives you a good amount of damping. It still is nice and, you know, pretty flat. Um, it just has so much grip. <laughs> oh, but it, I love how this thing wants to slide around. The other thing I can mention though, in my now 181 miles of driving, my fuel economy was 23.2, which is a good improvement over what I was getting in the 2020. That I did um, more spirited driving and less uh, highway cruising. This, I did a lot of spirited driving, but I also did about a 50% of my driving was probably on the highway out of that total mileage. So that helped to bring that average up. And so again, being 23.2 MPG is pretty solid for a car that's this fast again a car that has supercar levels of acceleration now basically beginning 23 totally happy with that so one thing I do want to mention for those of you that are watching this video uh, pretty early on here I'm filming this in May of 2020 um, and so production has been delayed a bit due to COVID so um, for anyone who's looking to buy one this summer they've made 400 of these before the virus shut down the plant so there'll be 400 six cylinders here production is going to resume in August and that's when they'll continue to make more of these and then the four cylinder they'll be making a couple of months after that I believe I think they said uh, early fall for that so it's gonna be a little bit of a delayed rollout here, even for the six cylinder version, but um, it is certainly worth the wait. Like I said, in the meantime, the 2020 is fantastic. If you don't wanna wait until you know these arrive, or try and hunt down one of the 400 here uh, that were built before the shutdown. Um, you know, they are, they are fantastic, but like I said, you might have a little bit of trouble finding them this summer since there's not gonna be a ton of them out there, um, but it certainly is worth hunting down because these things are fantastic, spectacular, 100% cannot recommend this car more. Yes, I'd love to see them do a manual transmission version. I hope that, you know, someday they will eventually do that. But in the meantime, you know, the CF8 speed's fantastic. And this whole thing, I think the Super would feel less intense with the manual as well because this automatic just, you know, bangs off those shifts so immediately and so viciously and just keeps that power going uninterruptedly. It's just very, very impressive. And I think it's a very well paired combo of the eight speed automatic and uh, this motor. It's just so, so good. Uh, but anyway, so huge thanks to Toyota for providing me with the 2021 Super here to play around with for a couple of days. Let me know your thoughts on the 2021 Super in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.